You are listening to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, episode 107. What I have found is that when one door closes, another door opens. However, when you close the door yourself, a thousand doors open. Right now, there are a lot of employment and career opportunities out there. And while it is easy to get wrapped up in so much speculation and forecasting about when a recession may or may not happen, I know this, you are completely responsible for your career. You are in control and you get to make the decisions about what is best for you and your career path. And there is some good news. As of Friday, July 8th, 2022, the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics reported that payroll employment rose by 372,000 jobs and the unemployment rate remained at 3.6%. In today's episode, you are going to meet Tom Scarda, the author of Franchise Savvy and the founder of the Franchise Academy. From subway conductor to entrepreneur, Tom shares his career journey and peels back the curtain behind why owning a franchise is a great opportunity for some and not others. Plus, he'll share what it means to create opportunities and embrace change in your career. This is the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, and I'm your host, John Narrell. I help mid-career professionals who are feeling stuck, undervalued, and underutilized show up to find a job they love or love the job they have using my proven four-step formula. It's time to start building your mid-career GPS, so let's get started. Before we get to today's episode, I want to take a moment and thank all of you, including my guests, for your support. Last week, this podcast achieved its 10,000th download, and this could not have happened without your support, shares, and posts about my podcast. I am honored to be here providing relevant, useful, and thought-provoking content to you each week to help you along your leadership and career journey, and there is plenty more to come. So now, on to today's conversation. Tom Scarta reached out to me several months ago and invited me onto his podcast, The Franchise Academy. Admittedly, I was a bit surprised as owning a franchise wasn't a topic I've addressed or intended to, so I was curious, why me? He shared that he wanted me to guest on his podcast because owning a franchise isn't for everyone, and when it's not, they need someone like me. Tom and I hit it off, and you will soon learn what a great storyteller he is. I want you to meet Tom Scarta. So my name is Tom Scarta. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, I know you can't hear that in my voice, but I will tell you there will be a lot of F-bombs. Not the four-letter F-bomb, but it'll probably be more like, forget about it. Um. And so, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a franchise, uh, you know, expert, they say, but I'm really a coach. I help people figure out if franchising is an option for them as opposed to a traditional job. And so I match people based on skills and personality and goals, kind of like eHarmony of business is what I like to call it. When I asked Tom what he wanted to be growing up, he gave me an answer that is quite compelling. As you listen to his story, I want you to hone in on this point. Tom was never going to settle for being mediocre. One thing that comes to mind I have to share is that when I was um, like 10 years old, everyone that I grew up with, all all my 10-year-old friends wanted to uh, play for the New York Yankees. Um, Not me. I wanted to be a Hells Angel. Hmm. I, I was enthralled with this subculture, motorcycles, tattoos, leather, long hair. At 10 years old, and I used to dress the part, and my parents just drove them crazy, and I ended up really kind of getting involved in that culture 10 years later, but that's probably a story for another podcast, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a very traditional person. Um, I never really thought about a career when I was younger, 
but I thought about, you know, who I want to be. And, and, and it's probably, uh, you know, if, if you look at me, I'm, you know, quite the opposite of a hell's angel and, you know, mainly because I like soap and, and laundry detergent, you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that, that's a little insight that a lot of people don't know about me. This this is why you and I get along. I appreciate your humor very much. And I like how frank you are with things. So, you know, you have this rebellious side in some kind of ways, but did that did that stop you from going to college or quote unquote pursuing a more traditional route when you were younger? Absolutely not. I tried it. I, I went to college. I was going to be an English teacher, high school English teacher. I was in my uh, third year in Brooklyn College, and it's a pretty good college for for teachers. And and so I was literally student teaching English in in, uh, in my junior year. And um, one day the dean came to me, the, the dean of um, at the education department, and said, "Hey, you know, you got to trim your hair because you know you're a role model for these kids, and you have to stop parking your bike on the sidewalk." because you're leaving oil stains and it's not very becoming. And so I quit the next day. <laughs> um, and, and I, I, you know, I had this old beat up, um, first it was a, a 1969 Triumph Bonneville that I kind of tricked out and made it to an old school chopper. And then I had an old Harley Davidson, you know, with the long front end and the big handlebars and all of that stuff. And I was a little bit out of place. So it was kind of like an alter ego thing, but I really enjoyed teaching. And so now I teach, you know, business. And so I found my home in business, but in a non-traditional way. But ultimately what happened was I quit college, drove a truck for a while. Then I took a test to be a New York City subway conductor and they offered me the job and I didn't have to cut my hair for the job. <laughs> and so... Um, I was a New York City subway conductor for 13 years, and I really enjoyed it. I loved being, you know, a part of the New York City underbelly, if you will. And one day, an old timer said to me, hey, kid, this is a great job because you'll always have a shirt on your back. He said, it'll never be a silk shirt, but, you know, at least you'll have a shirt. And I was like, wait a second, that sounds like mediocrity to me. And I didn't want that. I wanted the silk shirt. I, I wanted that metaphorical, you know, grander life, if you will. And I realized that, you know, my seniors, my bosses were not living the lifestyle I envisioned for myself, but business owners were. So at that point, I quit and I bought a franchise. Um, and we could talk more about that later, but I uh, bought this franchise, built it into three locations in five short years. I sold it, semi-retired at 41 uh, and have been teaching people how to do the same thing since 2005. If there is one theme across all of my guests and topics on this podcast, it is about how to help someone. For Tom, his career began to take greater shape and direction when he worked as a subway conductor, and it gave him an even greater vision about what was next. So what I learned is that time is everything, and of course, it's all about the trains have to be on time, right? So scheduling and, and being very kind of anal about that um, was something that I learned, but also interpersonal communication because I was meeting people literally from all over the world and they were asking me for directions. So I learned one specific term that I just used the other day with my son, um, consensual validation. And so what I mean by that is somebody will come up to me uh, on a train and say, um, Where's the Empire State Building? And, and I would say, you know, take the train to 34th Street, go upstairs, you're going to walk and you'll see the building when you get out of the subway. They would walk away from me 10 feet and then ask somebody else. And it's not that they, I learned, it's not that they didn't trust me, but they were just trying to validate because they were lost and, and worried and scared. And we've all been in that kind of position before. And once you learn how to realize that people are coming from a different place and it's not all about you, you can really enjoy and, and help people. And believe it or not, that's what I got out of being a subway conductor. There is an understandable allure to being a franchise owner. What we see on social media seems to paint this picture of freedom, less hours, and making more money. And while that can be true, 
Tom is an expert when it comes to helping people decide if owning a franchise is the right path for them. I wanted, I always had an entrepreneurial itch. And, and believe me, business ownership is not for everyone. And so you really have to know what you're getting into. So I read many books. I went to seminars. But I remember specifically, I could see in my mind's eye, sitting on the train and reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad the book by Robert Kiyosaki. And and if you read it, great. If you haven't, read it. If you've read it, read it again. It's absolutely phenomenal. And and so, you know, he just talks about the benefits of building a business as opposed to working a job that is not in your control. And, And so for some people, they need the job. They need the steady paycheck. They just can't, you know, I have a lot of friends. I, I still literally hang out with and go to dinner with now that I worked with in the subway back, you know, I'm talking 35 years ago. Um, and they said to me, I, you know, I, I just couldn't do that. I, I, I need, you know, I couldn't own a business. I need to know where my paycheck is coming from. And, and that's fine. Absolutely fine. And some of my buddies made it to be big giant bosses at the transit authority, which is awesome. Um, I just chose a different path. And, and so, you know, the big thing is, is fear and it's, it's about getting over fear. And that's been my life's work is, is trying to overcome fear in, in everything that I do, whether it's fear of money or fear of loss or whatever it is. And, you know, I've, I've written about it and, and you know, about all that stuff, but I think that um, that's the most important thing for me. And, and I feel that after reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a franchise is a business with training wheels. And that's what I needed because I knew nothing about business. I never sold anything. I never ran anything. I mean, I, I was, I became a manager in the subway and all that. And I dealt with people, but um, never, you know, running a business. And so that's what I did. And, and I also knew that I needed a coach. So I found a franchise coach to help me buy the franchise. And, and now I, follow her footsteps actually with the same company and coaching people. I asked Tom to tell us about his entrepreneurial journey and take us through his franchise businesses and what he's learned from each. So the first franchise I owned was something called Maui Waui Smoothies, which is really a special events concept. So if you can imagine Tiki Hut on wheels. And so it was meant for street fairs and the state fair, and you might even roll it into you know, a birthday party, a sweet 16, something in somebody's yard or even a catering hall. Um, But then I kind of went all out and I ended up getting a spot in the Jacob Javits Convention Center in Manhattan. And um, all I did is call him and and it it was right time, right place. The gentleman there, his name is Greg Fainer, said, hey, um, we're looking for exactly this. And, you know, would you come in, you know, do the boat show and, you know, whatever it was in two months. And, and so we did it and it was a huge success and, and we stayed there for five years and we had three locations in the building. But the, the funny thing is, is that single cold call, unbeknownst to me at the time, I had no idea. Every one of these buildings, even office buildings, colleges, institutions like hospitals, they all have food companies or food conglomerates that own the rights to the food and beverage in that facility, mm-hmm. out to the curb of the building. So like at the Javits Center, you can't have a hot dog cart on the sidewalk in front of the building. You have to be across the street from the building because they own the rights. So um, so after, after we had a really successful year, they came to me and said, hey, we have 136 other locations across the United States. We want to put these smoothies in every single one. Can you help us do that? Um, and... Yes. And so we did a lot with that. And um, and that was fun. But that, you know, I didn't run any of them. I, I only ran the one in New York that I had other franchisees bought franchises and they automatically got those locations that this company had, you know, from here, from New York to California. So basically. I mean, if we if we narrow this all down, right, you make a phone call and lightning strikes in a bottle. Yeah. Right. Tell us a little bit about what your mindset was like at that time 
being in your mid to late thirties, having this kind of success and handling it? So, um, really insightful questions. I like that a lot. So the, um, the mindset was faith. I had faith in myself. I had faith in the universe. I had faith in God, whatever you want to call it. Um, I knew that I couldn't fail. Failure was not an option. And I, and I felt very strongly that, um, and I didn't even really know it at the time I was learning this kind of stuff, but kind of law of attraction. I attracted this business to me. It had all the right elements that I needed and I wanted in my, in a business. And, and it was all about knowing that I am going to be successful and having a positive attitude. And, and I know that's very cliche, positive attitude. Um, people don't even want to hear that anymore, but you, you got to go into something where, where regardless of what it is, even when you get in your car to drive to work, if you feel like, Oh crap, I'm going to hit a lot of traffic. Chances are a lot better now that you're definitely going to hit traffic as, as opposed to, man, I'm so happy the universe is going to open up the roads for me today. It sounds stupid, but it could really affect your, you know, and this is all again, going down a tangent, but, but I feel that, I mean, that was my mindset. I, I knew, I, I knew that something would not be put in front of me if I couldn't handle it. And, and it went really, really well. Um, and I was being asked to do all sorts of extra things with, with the business catering and going to these big parties to, um, to cater smoothies and things like that. Um, and then, you know, a gentleman made me an offer I couldn't refuse and, and bought me out, you know, kit and caboodle. So I started when I was 36, I sold when I was 41. Um, but I do have to add that I bought a second franchise in 2006 called Super Suppers. And that franchise failed miserably, but that's what made me a franchise expert. I, I lost a lot of money, you know, upward, upwards, of, you know, pushing a half a million dollars on that. But I, you know, back then I was crying. Now I look at it as a very positive experience because now I could really help people and, and say, Hey, John, I know you love donuts, but open up a Dunkin' Donuts may not be the thing I'm telling you. And, 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 I didn't read it in a book, you know, I lived it. And, and so um, that's, I feel strongly about that part of it as well. I do love donuts. <laughs> so, so, I, yeah, so, so what I you do, really like, do. all kidding, all kidding aside, John, if you, if, you know, if that was the case, you know, little kind of lesson is, you know, if you love donuts, find a business that is low investment, high margin, Amazon resistant and pandemic resistant and make sure that it gives you enough money and enough time so you can enjoy donuts see your heart's content all over the world. That's the way to do business. Tom, what I love about your story is there is this um, seesaw between success and failure. Right. You have this phenomenal experience where you get this kind of success. And in the same breath, you get another experience, another phenomenal experience that gives you so much hindsight into what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, tell me a little bit how you go from, you know, you go from Maui Wowie smoothies where you have this success you go from super suppers that doesn't have the same kind of success. What gets you into the work you do right now where you are helping people decide if owning a franchise is the right career move for them? Well, so what happened was with the smoothie thing, originally I contacted this lady, Carol, uh, who works for the company I work with now. And she and I, and I said to her, you know, we don't have to go through the whole um, consultation process because I know what I want. I want um, a certain ice cream brand. I, I don't want to name brands at the moment because I don't have anything nice to say about the particular brand. Um, and she said, yeah, I know the brand, but their franchise agreement is lopsided. And if you buy that franchise, you're not going to make much money and it's going to cost you a bundle. Matter of fact, it costs so much that you can't afford it. It's out of your price range. 
So forget that idea. Um, and, and so she was able to coach me into the thing that was the right thing. Subsequently, when we did the super suppers thing, I was, I was not humble, right? I, I was like, I, I, I walk on water in business. I could do anything I want. You know, I'm great. And, you know, when you act like that, um, a lot of times uh, you get humbled. And, and so we, we bought the super suppers thing sort of sight unseen. We didn't do market research. We didn't, you know, just like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do it, you know? And, and it was a stupid mistake, but um, that's kind of what I learned is, is you just can't throw something against the wall and expect that it's going to work. You got to do a lot of research ahead of time and understand the market. Like Super Suppers was interesting because they had, um, it was a great concept in my mind. And it still is. It just they didn't execute it correctly. But you come to our location and you make meals in bulk. And um, it's inexpensive. You take them home and freeze them. On days when you're busy, you throw them in the oven and you have a home-cooked meal. And it started out with a bang. But, you know, it was a novelty. It, it wasn't, a, it didn't have staying power. And, and that was the big problem. And we were trying to change people's, habits and you know what one thing i learned is it's very difficult to change people's habits especially when it comes to food and convenience uh, unless you have a lot of time and a lot of money i mean even to the point where when i was working in the new york city transit system i was working for a short time on marketing the new um, metro card at the time in the 90s and and we, people would not give up their subway tokens for this media card, even though we would give them a free ride for every 10 trips because it was easier to do that. We had to take away tokens in order to get people to make the switch. And, and I, I even talk about that in my book, Franchise Savvy, is like that insight helped me later on understand where I went wrong with the super suppers concept. <laughs> Fear is an understandable reaction when we make decisions. If you haven't listened to last week's episode about overcoming fear in your job search, go back and listen. Whether it's Tom's work or mine, we share a common bond when it comes to helping people understand their thoughts and how it impacts their decisions. It's like they say in one of my favorite television shows, Big Brother, expect the unexpected. The big thing about fear I've found is it will stop people in their tracks when they're making a big life decision. So I wrote a book about it called The Magic of Choosing Uncertainty, How to Embrace Fear, Manage Change, and Live a Fulfilled Life. And it's nothing about franchising that particular book, but it's, it's really all major life decisions are really the choice between uncertainty or unhappiness. And so when you're out there and you're not feeling good about your job, like a client of yours, right? I'm not feeling good about my job. I feel like I need to change jobs. Um, sometimes you might want to look outside the industry you've been in the past 20 years. And you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to, you know, I've, I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm not going to do that. Um, and that's all based in fear. And you will not overcome fear. Nobody overcomes fear. But it's all about embracing it and moving through it knowing that what you really, really, really want is on the other side of fear, whatever it is. If you're choosing a college, you know, uh, should I go to this college or that college? It's the choice between uncertainty or unhappiness, you know, or maybe I should stay local so I could be near my parents or, and my friends, or, but you really, really, really want to go across the country because they have a specialized program for what you're interested in. So it's fear. But if you choose that, what, I've, what I have found, John, I think the biggest thing about this is change is going to happen, right? We all, I think we all know the fact that one thing that is certain absolutely is change. And if you sit around and wait for change to happen, you know, that's one way to live life. Meaning that if you're in a job and you know the handwriting is on the wall, that your position is going to be eliminated eventually. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but in the next year. You could choose to make the change yourself and go find a job different. And it could be in the same industry or totally different. Or you, you can just sit and wait to get laid off um, and, and just be there like a sitting duck. 
Um, what I have found is that when one door closes, another door opens. However, when you close the door yourself, a thousand doors open. And there's some kind of energy that happens around you that brings all the forces of the universe to help you be successful in whatever it is that you're going to do. And so it comes down to decision making as well, which is probably a whole nother podcast in itself, but, you know, making a decision and going with it and not changing course in the middle of that decision. But, you know, as, as some people say, burn your boat. And, and what, what they mean by that is if, if you're in a battle and you're going onto the shore, you burn your boats and you run onto the shore to fight. So either you're going to win or you're going to die. <laughs> and, yeah. and so if you live your life that way, uh, you have chances of being really successful and very, very happy. It's been almost a year since we heard the term, the great resignation. In some ways, it's still happening. Many people are taking time to pause and reevaluate where their careers are headed. Perhaps you've explored or have been interested in owning a franchise. How do you know which one? In this clip, Tom shares why and why not a franchise may be the right move for you, along with his advice to help you build your mid-career GPS. Well, in in what I do, the interesting part is that my services, it's just 100% free of charge. I get paid by franchise companies for bringing well-qualified people. So if you're, you know, if you feel like, hey, maybe I need to do something differently, you know, now's the time. Um, Just, you know, email me, pick up the phone, you know, whatever it is, call John, you know, find out about franchising. There's a lot of myths around franchising where people feel like, oh, I need a million dollars. You don't, you don't. You could start a franchise, you know, and get a loan uh, and not have anything out of pocket. There's ways to do it without having anything out of pocket. Um, you, You know, if you want to get into a McDonald's or, or a Duncan, no, yeah, it's definitely a million dollars. But all day long, I help people buy franchises that are well under a hundred thousand, um, and they could make back their salary pretty quickly uh, and get to that level. I mean, there's a ramp up, so don't get me wrong; it'll take a while. But um, but you could replace your salary. But to answer your question, it just you know check out you know my books, podcasts. I got all sorts of information for free. Um, and and so it, it, if you have an entrepreneurial itch and you think you do, and, and so this is interesting also, John, is, you know, I tell probably somewhere around 40% of the people that contact me to not buy a franchise, do not go into business. It's not for them. And that's an important thing to know. And, and I'm judged by the people I bring to the table. So if, if, if you don't have, the acumen to run a business or, or the money or whatever it might be. Um, or if you're a negative Nancy, do not go into business. You, you need to be um, very glass half full. And, um, and you know, if, if you don't have a glass, you know, you learn how to do glass blowing because you're an entrepreneur and you're going to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well said. Um, Tom, as we wrap up here, what advice would you give for someone to help them build their mid-career GPS? No, the the best thing to do is is read the career GPS uh, book by John and start listing your skills. What do you really enjoy to do? Like when you think of, you could be, you could have been a computer analyst for the past 20 years there's something about that job that you really enjoy. So focus on what that is. And also, fo- you know, write down all the things that you dislike about your current job. And then try to find a gig that focuses on the skill that you love to do, whatever it might be. And that, you know, they, they always say that if you love your job, you never work a day in your life. And that's absolutely true. Um, and a, and a business is a little bit different because you're building a lifestyle. So you could be a vegetarian and own a McDonald's. It doesn't matter. You don't have to love the product or the service. You have to love the role of the franchise owner that you are in that company. So you have to understand, is it going to take 
knocking on doors and building a network? Is it going to take, you know, selling? Is it going to take managing employees? But that, you know, and that's how you're able to define that. Whether it's a job or you feel like, hey, I want to do a business, you start with your skill set that you love. Very nice. All right. So, Tom, if people want to get a hold of you, contact you, connect with you, get your books, find out more about you, give us the pitch. Where can people uh, connect with you and all that? Yeah. So, you know, LinkedIn uh, is a great spot. My website is thefranchiseacademy.com. And it is, you know, include the word the. So it's thefranchiseacademy.com. And on there is, is, um, a GPS to everything else that I have out there. So podcast, I have several books. Uh, you could download all sorts of stuff for free. Um, if you want to have a chat, you could click on a button to schedule a call. You know, it's everything is there at thefranchiseacademy.com. Great. I will make sure all of that is listed. Tom Scarta, thank you so much for spending some time with me today on the Mid Career GPS podcast. Thank you, John. This is a great one. I appreciate it. I love the work you're doing. Same here, my friend. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Tom Scarda. Please make sure to check the show notes for information on how to connect with him and visit his website at tomscarda.com. Before I sign off, I'm hosting a webinar on Wednesday, July 20th with Robin Merrill and Maria Rosati called How to Evaluate a Job Offer in These Uncertain Times. The link is in the show notes to register for this free webinar and a replay option will be available for all registrants. I look forward to seeing you there. And until next time, my friends, remember this, we build our mid-career GPSs one mile or one step at a time and how we show up matters. Make it a great rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's show and don't want to miss an episode, follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you usually listen. And I'd appreciate it if you would leave a rating and review. Visit johnnarrell.com to download your free copy of the 55-Minute Career Transition Jumpstart to help you start building your mid-career GPS. And don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on social at John Narrell Coaching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. 